it out. Today we're doing Andor Season 1, Episode 2. SSU Analysis. Let's so last night we watched Andor Season 1, Episode 2. We had some thoughts about this. <clears throat> so this is like a adventuring scavenging hunting party they're gonna go after the ship and look how like look how tense everyone is except that third girl she's having a blast this is a picnic for her this is a walk in the forest actually this is a survival situation why is she having such a good time because <laughs> living and thriving it's the same thing she's having a blast i want to i mean who would you rather hang out with grumpy girl in the front or fun girl fun, fun girl, girl in back also are they ready for cold weather and uh like rain doesn't look like it does this planet have cold weather? Definitely has rain. Like no, we said maybe this. Places. We said maybe this place doesn't have rain. I wonder. Oh, but it's yeah, so maybe. lush. Yeah. But it's so lush. Maybe it's just humid and nasty all the time, and all the plants get like condensation, and that's enough for them. Could, yeah, <laughs> that could be. I mean, that could happen. Gross. But then, where do they get I their just, water supplies? Well, it could. It could rain up in the mountains, and then the water flows down. That's where they get their water from. Yeah. 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 So this is from the beginning of the episode. This is the boy and the his group are going to find the the crashed ship and they come across this ridiculously huge strip mine. And I believe later in the episode they say this is the planet Canari, that this has been strip mined the planet has been strip mined and the place has turned toxic, but somehow these kids are surviving. Oh, is this is this Cassian? Is that I think this Cassian? is young Cassian? This is young Cassian. Oh. On the toxic planet. Somehow survive. I mean, people say this is ugly, but I think this is gorgeous. It's gorgeous, yeah. That resource acquisition. Mm. Mm. For the company. Oh, I meant gorgeous in like a gorgeous, like a hole in the ground. Oh, then it is very gorgeous. Oh. <laughs> look at that slippery. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this slippery slope. Look at this. How are you going to drive on that? Well, it's obviously a landslide. How m I don't Fuck. think it was made that way. That's good. Oh, oh, actually, you meant like in terms of an actual analysis, not like a you didn't weren't doing wordplay there. That's right. Fuck. And I think there's if you look in the distance over there. I mean, this is actually very excellent digging. Like, look how consistent these steps are. That is efficiency. That's no wasted shit. Yeah. But how long? So the trucks have to drive down on those um, steps, on the steppy things, the terraces. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Terrace. we've got like probably what, 20, 25 terraces that are these super long things. It's going to take forever to get down to the base of the mine and then get back up. I should have right. a conveyor. Load up at the top. They should have a conveyor. But isn't it strip mines on Earth? We have those big dump trucks that drive up those terraces. Mm -hmm. I guess they don't make these enormous conveyors. That's what they should do that. Yeah, why not? I was also going to point out um, that here, like you said, there is a landslide. But it looks like there's also a landslide here and here. So I think this is an old mine. And it's just collapsing in on itself because it's not maintained. Oh, yeah. It's like rainwater Maybe. carries in a bunch of dirt. I see it. Yeah. So this is not an operable mine. If we look at the next pick, you see these machines are all toppled. Yeah. You know, I didn't so, realize that these were like, I just thought they were just not operational. I didn't think that they were like disabled. They're just because it seems reasonable that this stuff is just turned off. You know, everyone went home for the weekend. And they we went home for the weekend and toppled it on its side. What's toppled here? This, this, uh, this large. This Julie, I thought that was, here. yeah, I figured that like you just store it sideways or something. Is it toppled? So I think, I think if I remember correctly, if we go to, they're called, um, big diggy boys. Yeah. It's like big dig minor machine these things mm -hmm. what are they called largest digging machine yeah these things but like you know can i turn it down sideways if yeah. i need to do maintenance or whatever like sure i don't i don't this thing right there yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. but i don't think you, you can't topple this thing sideways here oh mm -hmm. 
What do I look like? An astronaut? Who also knows how to dig? <laughs> like in that astronaut movie about digging? What is that movie? Fuck. Armageddon. Armageddon. That's a good movie. You know, actually, what is this thing? What is this machine doing here? Like, shouldn't it be down on the, the <laughs> shouldn't base? Shouldn't it be down at the bottom? <laughs> it's certainly, it's, its extender here is not long enough to get all the way down to the Gross. floor of the, the mine to pick up the mine stuff. Yeah, so maybe it's this been was abandoned. A... Yeah, maybe it's been abandoned along for a long time, longer than the mine was abandoned. And they didn't try to repair it? That's weird. They just left it there and precariously there? on the edge so it could just fall down onto the workers below. Yep. Yep. It's cool though. God, that's a lot of volume of land moved. It's a big ass hole. This guy has the coolest job. Not only that, but his personality, like he's like a monk about it, like religious, devout, just every day at the time. He goes up there, he bangs his hammers, but look at his face. Dude's just at peace. And it's very monk like because the the bell tower is clean. I mean, absolutely spotless. He's looking sharp in his clothes. Everything looks like it's in tip-top shape. And look at this so. this metal structure. His bells, like, they're damaged, but just a little bit. Like, he's not over-striking. He's not under-striking. This guy, this guy is a master. Also, this is another positive check in the governance of this city because they have a bell tower that is manned by somebody who is paid, and that's his job who is doing a fantastic job at his job and it's clean and well-maintained bells are being rung on time amazing looking at yes and look at this look at this oh can we go to the next picture oh how do we do that yeah or the below one below i wanted this is actually just even a better picture look how cool and stylish this guy is got this like yeah. cool strike pose <laughs> right and he's got this he's he's got a, the the hammer action this, just down he's got this style he's got grace he slams his hammer in your face and makes this ring Ooh. look at that resonant yeah. cavity mm. it keeps the town on time like a clock big part of their man yeah. if you just slam that down with his wait what <laughs> I realized that my only <laughs> rhyme option, I was like, nope. <laughs> Bam! Oh Everyone wake up with my bell oh my. hammer. <laughs> His bell hammer? Yeah, oh yeah, because so he's, he's hitting uh, him with hammers, not a... Look how organized this town is. This clean street right here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Organized buildings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's no, it doesn't look very crime ridden up here. It looks very clean. Amazing. Mm -hmm. So this is a scene where Bix is, I guess this is her shop. This is the front end of the shop where she does maintenance. And this is like the sales counter. And look at this computer here. First off, what symbol is that in the, in the computer monitor? What is that? No idea. No, no idea. idea. It's just no Star idea. Wars shapes. <laughs> yeah. also, Maybe it's, it's, it's their version of Microsoft. There it is. It could be empire soft empire soft where and how are you supposed to use this look at these like wing input devices so you're supposed to like grab on to each side and thumb it it's like a giant it's like a giant steam deck it's like your monitor in the middle and like you gotta get controls uh, on the sides yeah. Yeah. yeah it's like a giant controller yeah that's yeah. how you and none of the buttons are labeled on these these like wing controllers just guess just, just, yes. You just got to know. It's very fast once you've mastered it, but if you're the new guy in the shop, you can't run Not the chance. front end, the, the point of service machine until like three years into your job. Oh, is that POS? <laughs> I thought it was I, a piece of shit. Oh, point of, point service. of service. It's also, it's also a piece of shit, but it's point of service. So like the things they have at, at restaurants, you know? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Where the server like, Record your stuff, yeah. Point of service, yeah, yeah. that makes sense. So this must be a point, point of service, service, you know, machine? 
in Star Wars. So cool. Neat. Okay, so Bix is looking up the report about like who's looking for a canary male. And then the guy who's like her business partner, I don't know which one of them owns the, the store, but like he comes in and she's shocked and she like shuts down the computer. Like she hides it, but all she does is turn off the monitor. Like he comes back in and then like after she leaves and he just turns it on and it's still looking at whatever she's looking at. That's like, that's like hiding your screen because you just turn off the monitor. That's like, that's like hiding your food in a microwave and all you did was pause it. That's like that's like having you have a basketball and you just cover it with a white sheet and you're like, oh, it's not there. I mean, it's like on a computer today. If you're browsing something, you don't want a person to come around and see. You just minimize the browser <laughs> and walk and away. Leave. It's good forever. <laughs> they come in and they maximize it and they're like, oh, what were you looking at? Oh. <laughs> so you couldn't hit like backspace or anything. You couldn't hit escape. Well, I mean, I guess you couldn't because which one of these buttons is escape? It's on labels. Maybe she just because she's she's in the back doing maintenance. She doesn't know how to work the point of service. Oh, there it is. <laughs> so why is she, she knows- looking up sensitive things on the <laughs> in the front? Go to one of her places in the back or do it at home. That's right. Yeah. She's what never had to thing? exit a window. That's right. What is what thing? So weird. She's supposed to be like tech smart. Because she's like a mechanic for pod racers and, you know, uh, ships. So she yeah. would understand tech quite well. I can fix a car. I can't write a program. I mean, I don't think she'd be able to write a program because that's not her specialty. But she's interacting with the front end of tech pretty often. True. It's like a person in the modern world not knowing how to use a phone. It's like a modern person in the modern world looking up something on a phone that they're not supposed to, and they try to hide it by just by turning off the screen. But if you turn it back on, it's all still there. But I see it with a phone. If you just locked the screen, that would work. But it would have to be your own personal device, not a right. public device. But even if you unlocked it, like it still has whatever's up. It didn't even swipe away. True. But I was saying if it was a personal device, then if you lock it, only you can unlock it. But if it's a public mm-hmm. device, then multiple people can unlock it. You have to close. On this uh, monitor here, look at these knobs and stuff. Yes. I mean, I am a huge fan of these types of knobs and switches knobs. Yeah. and toggles. Positive feedback? Very positive feedback. Nice and analog. It just feels like you're doing something instead of this like software touchscreen. Like, what the fuck? Um, okay, boomer. But... But this seems to be an unhealthy combo of the two. We've got these nice analog switches, but then is that a touch screen? I have no I think idea. It's a touch screen. I have no, I have no idea. Maybe. Maybe. And then, then there's lights like up here mm-hmm. and down here. It looks like cathode ray tube on the right. On the right. Where are you looking? Those glass screens? I think there's a cathode ray tube in there. What, this glass screen? Uh, further on the right, just next to his arm. Right, right here. Like, I think that looks like an oscilloscope. It looks like an electric little, uh, like a little like dot will come across this thing. Oh, the weird thing is, is that feedback about what's going on should be inside the monitor, not mm-hmm. as separate lights. Cause you've got this strange combination of like analog feedback and output to a monitor very strange star wars you know is strange maybe rumors. maybe this is like this is like the backlight is on this is like the side light is on this one is the bathrooms occupy this one's like i don't know delivery dudes on the way each one has its own indicator light delivery dude is on the way okay i'll buy it i don't know i don't know man shipping dude he's a store i don't know store stuff yeah, UPS guy hits a button on his little thing and he's like, I'll hit, light up that LED on their point of service machine. I mean, it's a very efficient, well-run community. Maybe they have very good communications. <laughs> it's true. Plausible. So on this planet where Bix and her boyfriend slash boss live, everybody is just so on top of these, what are they called? APBs? 
all, all points, points bulletin. bulletin. Yeah. All points. Yeah. All points bulletin. All points bulletin. Everyone's so on top of it. Like everybody's looking at their personal console Check. and their console at work to make sure that there's nobody on the wanted list. I've just never seen that in in any society. But here, is, they're on top of it. Is there some type of like giant reward that people like really care about it? Or is it just like a planet of narcs? Just ready to ready to it's tell planet, them people all the time. Yeah. Planet of rats. I mean, why? I mean, even it's just like even if you're busy, you got <laughs> your right. work, you got your family life, you got your personal life, you got all this stuff going on in your life. You're like, I need to put aside, uh, you know, a couple times a day to check the all points bulletin. Yeah, do I want sure to no fugitives in my town? I don't want to exercise. I don't want to take a nap. I want to look out for fugitives. Yeah. And it's for the this like evil corporation. I feel like citizens of the town don't like the evil corporation. Yeah, they're on it. They're on it. They're on it. They're on it. Is this uh, a kitchen right here? That was my question. Is this a kitchen? A kitchenette? Maybe. Kitchenette, this? Yeah, a little, right little mini, yeah. That's a kitchen, right? Kitchenette. Mm -hmm. Get some overhead lighting going on here. What is this? They got a desk lamp right here. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, <laughs> what are you, you haven't, doing? You haven't been to my apartment. Yeah, I literally have. This looks exactly like my kitchen. <laughs> like, like, like right down to this, like this clamp lamp. Like I have. It's so dangerous. It's fallen into my sink a couple of times now. But like, it's the brightest light. I want it right over where I'm doing dishes. But like, as dangerous as fuck. <laughs> Wait, wait a second. You're the type of person who's like, we've got to get the ergonomics and this stuff set up so we don't have any danger and, you know, things are smooth and streamlined. And then in your own apartment, you're like, whatever, I'm going to have a desk lamp, lamp hanging over the side, toppling into the sink. It's, it's worse than a desk lamp. It's a clamp lamp. So it's it has this like metal bowl as seen there in, in the picture. But instead of having like a strong, sturdy base, it has a clamp that you just clamp onto things. I clamped it onto my on the bottom of my cabinets. Because that's where I got the best light. <laughs> and it's super dangerous. <laughs> Just don't fuck it up. <laughs> God damn. <sighs> Landlord comes I mean, by. This, dig it down. <laughs> this apartment. I think it's this old woman's apartment. Or is it so. Andor's and think the so. old woman's apartment? I think it's the old one. It's a really nice apartment. It's spacious. It's got this brick. No ventilation. It's nice. I bet. Okay, maybe there's bad ventilation. But you can set up a light. Like, what are you doing? Then also, is this a water heater? Is that what that is? Or is it a tank of Bacta? Bacta tank. Ooh. It's a Bacta tank. You get a little, little Bacta, you get a little cut. Yep. I don't know. A little bruise in your face. Just a little Bacta up. Yeah. It's, it's somehow the dichotomy between like poor things, like, you know, poorly made kitchenettes, but then this mm -hmm. nice spacious apartment that, you know, People would pay huge money for in like Brooklyn. It's a strange dichotomy in this. Uh, what is this town's name? Oh, we talked about this in the know. first episode. I don't know. I don't remember. We we saw it like the what the when the planes were like coming in. We we're talking about like the ball buildings. But I'm not sure that that was on the same planet. That's the same planet because because it's a it's the planet where the the um, cops are and yeah same planet. But but later on in this episode, when they go to apprehend, um, oh no, you're Cassian, right. They like fly. They in took like a ship. This, they took a ship through hyperspace. I don't know where this place is. So yeah, I'm a little confused on the layout of what's going on here. So Bix and Cassian have a secret meeting at this bar, but like, and they're like sitting there and talking. But if you they cut to the scene where there's Bix's boyfriend, and he's like looking through this little aperture, this bend in the metal pipe, and then he walks away. He walks away because he's angry. But when we come back into the conversation and look from the other side of the table, he's he was like standing in her peripheral vision. She like all she had to do was look a little bit, and she would have seen him. Like she's super not secreted. She's just chilling out there at like the one or two bars in the entire town. And when you look at where he's standing, he's like at the bar. Maybe maybe she does see him and she's a game player. She said, I'm going to make him jealous. <laughs> make him jealous of this handsome man. And it worked, right? It worked. Because he's all upset in the following scenes in the episode. He being the her boss slash boyfriend. Boss boyfriend. You see this bar? Like, 
that curvy bar in the middle of the picture like that's where he's standing like he's in her peripheral vision yeah. <laughs> so this is after the bar scene where the jealous boyfriend slash boss uh exits the bar in sort of a not so happy place and then he's going to this payphone bank in star wars so there's payphones and this speeder comes out of nowhere and it just like zooms across the like, this is a pedestrian pathway and the speeder just comes zooming through there's this old guy over here you know on the left side right here just there Casual like there walking. must be there must be pedestrian accidents all the time in this town weird is this then, city well organized maybe they're not i think it is look how clean this payphone bank is that's good maybe point. there are some cool traffic laws that they follow as they zoom around it's and, speeders have their right away <laughs> <laughs> yeah then this weird payphone you know mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. it's star wars don't they have communicators they have to go to payphones i don't huh. know yeah huh yeah oh wait, you know what but, it's because he's doing an anonymous tip but in in today's world we don't even have it's like trying to find a payphone for an anonymous tip would be almost impossible like just don't in his defense, anymore. I don't see anywhere to pay there. It's just a phone. Yeah. Also, maybe in the Star Wars universe, when the planets are really far apart, and maybe production of advanced electronics isn't as good as oh. we have it, uh, maybe it's very difficult to get your hands on communication devices, so pay phones are more common. I like this. This is like the centralized phone bank for people wanting to make off-world calls because it's very difficult to send a message off-world. So the governing body here was like, let's make them stand so that these conversations can't be that long. Oh. Basically Comcast. Fuck you guys. What? Comcast? Comcast, Comcast, Comcast. makes you stand when you use the internet? Well, because they like give us like they give us a monthly total data allotment even though it's like trivially cheap to just the, the data caps are are fat are the data caps are fabricated by the companies to limit us so like in our speeds we can go much further but they they just want to make profits so the whoever's in charge of this place is also like we can't have people taking 45 minute two hour long interplanetary phone calls so they make it ergonomically difficult for you to make a phone call for a long time make me stand mm -hmm. okay i believe it and that's consistent with good governance at this place but under resource constraints so this is their way around resource constraints and instead of having like a nasty law with like all citizens only have 20 minutes they're just like no we'll just make it in a way that makes it a little bit difficult to stand along people will naturally just have a speedier conversation and this alien to his left it's just hanging out there all day, taking it's advantage like, the of the fuck? situation. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He's like, my species doesn't care about standing for a long time. Mm -hmm. You got that slick back hair. He's cool. He's cool. Yeah. He's got like he's like got this like visor on. What is it called? Is that a visor? Is that's that a visor. Top is missing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's cool a visor. Radiative cooling for his head, but like also super narrow sunblock. visor. It's nighttime. It's for fashion. There's no actual sun right now. Actually, are they? They're wearing pretty similar stuff. Yeah. That means their natural body temperature is similar. Oh yeah, yeah. Except maybe a little bit hot. Maybe. What? What do you mean a little bit hot? A little bit warmer. They need a little bit less insulation. He's got his head exposed. It's like right, right down to skin. Like. I mean, so does our boy here. He's got hair. Maybe maybe that uh, stuff on that guy's head is some sort of insulator. Now I feel uncomfortable. They're just fat strands. I get it, though. Okay. Okay. So we're at this guy's house, and he's all sad because, because Bix is like, he thinks Bix is fucking around. So homie goes home and drinks. And look what they got on this planet. Fruit Loops. You got Fruit Loops there? All right. I live here. I love this planet. Clean streets and fruit loops. Fruit loops. Oh, also, is this his, is this his phone? Um, I think that's a flask. It's a flask. He's drinking? Yeah. Alcohol. Fruit loops and whiskey? Fruit loops and brown juice. 
brown juice. Is that whiskey? It could be. Star it also Wars could whiskey? just be. It also could just be a brown animal that they squeeze and drink. Mm-hmm. Is it brown or is that blue fluid? I think the container is blue. The drink in his hand is brown. So the brown fluid came out of that flask. Uh, or maybe this thing. But maybe he was carrying that flask earlier. I don't know. It looks like a flask. Okay. I think it looks like a phone. But I guess you're right. There's a there's a nozzle on top here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And inside mm-hmm. is some blue fluid that may be the brown fluid. So look at... From the previous episode, we were in the boss's office, and we thought he was looking down over the workers, lording over them. But actually, he's on the same level. Remember these windows? These windows right here? Ooh, yeah. We thought he was looking down on the on the group, but actually, he's on the same level. Well, how high up is the boss of bosses that we saw last time? I think he's in charge of the station. He's in charge of the whole station, and this is his office? Huh. Huh. At, at least the planet with the ball uh, buildings he's in charge of. Give him an office. What is this? Hmm. I mean, that is his office, just right behind the glass between his underlings. And Very I guess he's on, the, he's on the same level as, like, the head underling and then the other underlings on, like, a sub-level. Actually, not that pompous. It's pretty okay. So he gets, like, 6 to 12 inches of pompous. That's it. Okay. Not bad, actually. But this corporation has humble middle management and upper management. Is he is he upper management? He can't be. Look at this office. Can't be. That's not sufficiently up. If I'm working for a corporation in today's world in a cubicle, and I just walk over to my boss's office, middle management. Corporate is like off somewhere out in the Caymans. That's right. That's right. Living their yeah. life. In fact, you that's know. who he's reporting to right now. He went on off planet to go report to corporate. That's right. Yep. And me as a worker, I cannot call corporate. They're way too important for me. Right. Yep. So literally, I cannot be on their level. <laughs> oh, capitalism. What is this lady's name? I don't know. his mom so to speak mm-hmm. so that's what mom? that's what his friend well that's what his co-worker said he's like your mom but i don't know if they're actually that might just be yeah. i mean i guess it shouldn't be because we see cassian as a kid as having mm-hmm. like his his uh lord of the flies friends or family um mm-hmm. so i don't know what her story is this place looks cozy though like i know i wanted to co- comment on how co- cozy and secure this is why are they rebelling again yeah, I mean, look at this beautiful skylight. Just central, big, beautiful glass. Hmm. It's not like they're stuck in some, like, box that is dehumanizing. They've got a skylight, these cool arches, high ceilings, cozy couches. Mm-hmm. Nice decorations. A little globe there. That's cool. Why are they rebelling again? They just got don't my, like... like... My, got my loyal robot dog. Yeah. Yeah. With its own little charging station. Mm. reliable power Mm -hmm. i mean the empire far away on coruscant doing its horrible stuff sure but on this planet everything seems to be kind of going okay quality of life pretty good yeah also is this this is cassian's mother we're not sure i don't know she said like her his co-worker says like tell your tell your mom that she can turn up the heat in your apartment but like I don't know if it's his mom because the kid in the, in, in the jungle world is Cassian, right? And he don't got a mom. Mm-hmm. I mean, he has a mother. Maybe. He didn't just spring into existence out of a rock. Okay. <laughs> his mommy might be dead, though. Oh. Oh, no. That's okay. It happens. Okay. So this is a mother figure or perhaps his mom. Yeah. I wanted to comment on the star wars ships how do star wars ships re-enter the atmosphere they just re-enter yeah i don't know the only time i think i've seen a star wars ship enter the atmosphere 
is in Return of the Sith when Anakin is like landing the Star Destroyer onto the planet and like the crash. Mm. So there they see you see like the burning of stuff, but I don't know about this ship. Like maybe it goes in butt first because the head looks like that glass would just get rocked. Yeah, I mean, and maybe maybe what they do is they're at orbital speed and they just slow down and then just fall to the planet. Yeah, but I mean, if you're at if you're orbiting the earth and you dropped down would that be enough acceleration to like heat your ship up upon re-entry i think so well right now we do orbital re-entry at high speed because we need the high speed of orbit and we don't have the fuel to slow us down in orbit and support us while we're slowing down but if we had no fuel and engine constraints we could just support the craft above the surface while it's going to essentially zero relative to the planet and then just turn off the engines and just free fall at terminal velocity which won't cause re-entry oh really oh i don't know well it won't cause like a shock wave because it's oh yeah okay because you're not gonna you're not gonna exceed this the speed of sound so you won't get a a a shock wave and then if you're well below that high friction limit of of the of re-entry then yeah, you just get like a little warmer, but not like burning hot. Yeah. Maybe it's okay. Yeah. So maybe that's how they re-enter mm-hmm. atmospheres. And so they don't need these heat shields. And maybe in Return of the Sith, because it was a battle, it was all chaotic, and they falling. didn't have control. The ship was just fell out of orbit, and it couldn't lower its speed. Maybe. I buy it. Look at this high, high high quality electronics that the empire makes like say what you want about them doing evil shit like their r&d and their logistics department make beautiful electronics yeah i mean look at this it's like symmetric Mm -hmm. it looks really high quality Mm -hmm. no corrosion even though it's sitting out in this exposed desert Mm -hmm. high quality materials yeah and it's probably probably he Cassian has taken off the face of it with those four screw holes so it's mm-hmm. probably got a nice seal that you can screw in so the electronics don't degrade depending on the environment. Yeah, amazing. I mean, they're evil but like they're really well functioning. Yeah, the 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 rebel scum have like degraded equipment that's all like got scuzz all over it. Mm-hmm. And here mm-hmm. the empire is with high quality electronics. Amazing. Yeah. And are we... Do we want to be on the ones? Empire side? <laughs> yeah. Like, like but, some dude down the corner may do some evil shit, but I got my, like, 4K plasma TV. Like, sure, hi, hi, hi. Access to high-quality electronics and good governance? Or do I want to be free with the rebels in Squalor? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That's a tough decision. I support Anakin killing the younglings. I support it. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I don't disagree. So this is, I don't know who this is. There's this old guy who's come to the planet and is looking through these binoculars. These super cool Star Trek. Star Trek. Oh my gosh. Star Wars binoculars. And he's looking through his binoculars at this amazing bus station. Mm-hmm. Look at this. It's a transit hub. It's, it's a transit hub. It's amazing. What a building. What a piece of architecture. Yeah. We don't get uh, these like public transit hubs in California. Well, maybe this is filmed in uh, in Europe. I hear they got a lot of public transit out there. But this is supposed to be a town that's under the corporate yoke of the higher ups and the empire. And the empire has invested in a transit hub that's that right. looks very well run. That's right. Am I supposed to, I want to, do I want to live here? I mean, probably this also, also this public transit hub is probably paid for by the corporation. Not getting nickel and dime. They're just like, yeah, we'll take, we'll pick you up from home, drop you out of work. No big deal. Yeah. And we'll have this nice spacious transit hub that, uh, you know, with a nice schedule. I mean, even from here, I can tell it's clean. There's no like black spotches on the roof. Like even the roof is maintained. Hmm. Yeah, you could go over to the rebel side with their corrupt speeder taxis, or you can have our amazingly run bus station. 
This is an excellent advertisement for the Imperium. Imperium? Yes, the Imperium. Is that what... I mean, I don't know. Is that another word for it? What is it called? Oh, the Galactic Empire? Yeah, the Galactic Empire. If this no, is no, no, what no, I get wait, for the Galactic, younglings yeah. dying, I mean, take sign me up. Yeah, it was like 44 sensitive younglings like for the entire universe or entire galaxy, whatever, being whatever. awesome and like nice transit, clean places to live, food supplies, like that's stability. Guy in a bell tower. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stable lives for, for the people inside. Yeah. Yeah. So in the last episode, a ship crashed near Cassian's childhood home, the poor forest place. And there's a group of kids went to go find the, the ship. And next to the ship, they find these yellow corpses. Why do you think they're yellow? Jaundice. <laughs> That's what I thought. What is jaundice? We need to look it up. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, here we go. Send it. Jaundice, also known as icterus. I've never heard that before. Icterus. It's a yellowish or greenish pigmentation of the skin and sclar sclera. Sclera. It's the eyes. Yep. The white oh, part. That's what, okay. Due to high bile, bile, rubin Billy Rubin. Billy Rubin. Billy Rubin. What is Billy Rubin? Billy Rubin is. Billy Rubin is a red orange compound that occurs in normal catabolic pathway that breaks down heme invertebrates. Okay. It's complicated. Uh, okay. Jaundice in adults is typically a sign and indicating the presence of underlying diseases involving abnormal heme, heme, yeah, blood metabolism, liver dysfunction, and bilary tract obstruction. Oh, like bile tract obstruction. Mm. Okay, so something, something done gone wrong with the body. You yeah, got jaundice. So yeah. that's our scientific opinion. So she should check this body for dark urine. Yeah. Okay. I mean, right, right. So, <laughs> yeah, that's good. Okay. So this guy right here, I see on his bot on his like face slash head there, and his Andy. hand are both yellow. Mm -hmm. So maybe this has to do with the toxicity of the planet. Somehow the toxins got in, done fucked up his shit, and then he turned yellow. Oh, also, I see what I like they may have a they may have a developed immunity that these guys mm -hmm. don't. Hmm. Well, these guys don't, and that's why they're wearing these gas masks because mm -hmm. they're trying to stay toxin free. Although I, the snag factor on this pipe or tube right here is uh -huh. pretty high. True. If you're walking around, that thing is going to snag. Oof. Uh, and I guess it's only respiratory because, you know, they don't seem to have airtight clothing yeah so it must not go through the skin whatever it is this reminds me of welding hoods yeah you can get these things that pump in nice clean air from behind you oh mm -hmm. is that hooked into some kind of thing on the wall or is that like a backpack you could do the wall if you have i mean it's a backpack but you could do the wall if you have like a stationary setup where you're always going to be welding in the same spot. Um, kind of like how when you have like um, high danger virus labs, you can hook into airlines that are connected to the ceiling. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're saying the kids have an immunity to this toxin. Ooh. And these guys have some sort of welding breathing apparatus to protect them. But that failed. And so now they yeah. are falling over. Maybe that's where all the adults went. Oh, maybe it only affects adults and not kids, the toxicity. So when these kids grow up, they're going to keel over. Like a reverse chicken pox. Wait, no. Wait, like a normal chicken pox. <laughs> when kids get chicken pox, no big deal. When adults, you get shingles, you get fucked up. Okay. You don't keel over and die, do you? I hear it can be really bad for adults to get chicken oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that in high percentage of cases or just... Ooh, you're testing my limit of my medical knowledge. Um, oh, I think gosh. it's pretty bad. And that's why there was a big push back when we were kids to have like chicken pox parties because they're like, do, do it and get it out of the way when they're kids and they can survive it. Mm -hmm. Like it won't be such I a see. big problem. I think it's like pretty mm -hmm. bad for adults. But mm -hmm. I don't have, I don't know. Okay. 
we'll look we'll look that up later. Sure. So let's just let's just jump right into the next image. Okay. So in the next image, their kids are exploring around this this crashed craft, and they think the guys are either dead or just like completely incapacitated. Well, this dude pops up out of kind of nowhere and just he just like sees a child and just is like blasting at children like what is he doing what is he doing maybe he learned about the legends of anakin and how darth vader came about he's like younglings younglings are the key to my power and he thinks he's going to level up that's some dedication to the ideals of the empire <laughs> on yeah. a, at a low level yeah some worker bee on some transport ship is like i must kill young kids too for the empire yeah, I mean, if Darth Vader came from the lowly beginnings of standard level Jedi Knight and came all the way up to the Emperor's right hand, like this guy, he's not he's not like magical like a wizard, but like maybe, you know, assistant secretary pretty high. Hmm. Also, I learned from hunters, poke things in the eye. If you poke something in the eye, it's and it doesn't respond, it's dead. If you poke something in the body, it could be playing possum like actual possum. So if you see somebody sleeping and you want to know if they're dead or not, just jab them in the eye, blind them. And if they wake up, then you know they jab. were asleep. Poke them in the eye slowly but firmly. <laughs> okay. So if somebody's sleeping, just jab them slowly and continue. Don't into jab. The... Don't jab. Just slowly and firmly until you feel the back of their skull. Oh God! Yeah, oh, geez. Actually, let's like bring this. up that scene. I don't scene. like where this went. <laughs> let's let's actually bring up that scene of them shooting because it up. is it's absurd. Yeah, how just just suddenly evil he is. <laughs> yeah, let's see where can we find it here. That being said, she should have done her job. Here he goes. Here he goes. Here he goes. Let's see here. Here we go. Uh, can we do a little bit. He gets up. Back? Well, he just he just woke up. Yeah, Wait, why do like, we want to go further back? Just to see him go from asleep to starting to get up. Real. Yeah. yeah. Here, yeah, perfect. Oh, his hand's like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. So Coffee. Up. He's delirious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, John Hardy. Here he goes. So hard. And uh, where am I? So he's been up for about 15 what? seconds Can't and he's like, blasting children. Oh, more children. Blast. Well, I think the later ones, that makes sense. Because there's like people screaming around you. You get a <laughs> tactically poor position. Time to take some shots. But the first girl. But if he hadn't just started blasting, he would they wouldn't have shot him. Mm. Or there's a high chance they wouldn't have. Mm. Yeah, probably. I mean, they hadn't yet, right? I mean, if you start blasting, the chances that they start shooting is pretty much 100%. Goes up, goes up real quick, yeah. <laughs> Unreal. Okay. So in summary, he needed to do it better. He needed to do it better. <laughs> he, he needed to realize what kind of tactical situation he was in. and not Play it cool, lay low for a while, blast people later. So this is a kiosk or like a ticket office for where Cassian buys transport tickets. Again, so clean and well run. And this worker, he's just like wearing his uniform super well. What's with all the monitors? Like, how many monitors does this guy need to sell tickets? I see, I see this monitor, I see this monitor, I see this side guy over here. One, two, three, four, I see this six, thing that's not even turned on. I see six. this one. I'm not sure what's going on there. There's a, here's another one, huh. right there. Here's another one right there. I think that's a monitor. Isn't it? He's got, and I'm I'm assuming there's one behind him. Bam. Right there. Bam. Bam. Oh, there's even more. Little boy right there. So many monitors. What? How many tickets is he selling? What is going on here? Yeah, I want to... I want Oh, you see in this top right, like this guy? Like, that looks like a ship. Maybe he monitors, like, refueling there or something. And, like, this, like, look up the ship to see if, see if like, they'll have enough space on the ship for the people to be on there. Hmm. So yeah, <laughs> this guy is soloing the logistics of the transport system. <laughs> yeah, selling tickets, monitoring fuel repairs, status of incoming people. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, that's a st- that's a sign of a of a high functioning society where we only need one person to do so many things. So many things must be automated, well controlled, good systems. I guess, except their monitor swivel arms are pretty poor. They need to be angled better. So uh, this is the ship that the I don't know. You call him the annoying middle management guy who's really taken this crime seriously. This is the ship that he takes his crew with to go capture uh, Cassian. I thought the corporation and Cassian's planet were the same, but they're in hyperspace. I guess they're on I different planets. I guess not, yeah. It's just super weird. And look at the design of the ship. What's going on with the design of the ship? Like, That's right. Are these these down here are little mini craft like landing craft i think so i ready, think so ready I think, to deploy yeah i think so yeah. it's this is like the carrier and these are little baby ships that pop out mm-hmm. so this thing is not for re-entry this looks like down here which we can't quite see it looks like communications oh geez communications on the bottom of your ship that's just asking to get wrecked but maybe it doesn't matter. You can just freely rotate the, th- the some bitch and then That's true. send send your communications wherever. Like Boba Fett's Slave One. Like I never understood that ship. Is he flying laying down? Like does he take off laying down or something? Like <laughs> that's true. Yeah. And then I guess the whole big section up here must be crew quarters and barracks. I guess so. And only attack this ship from. That one uh, side. <laughs> from what is it? The port side. Because, uh, right yeah. Because they only got one cannon. the only place there's a gun. Only one mm-hmm. cannon. I guess mm-hmm. there's a corresponding one on the starboard side. Probably, maybe. But it's Star Wars. They have asymmetric ships all the time. They do. So you can you imagine this ship is asymmetric. The, the only thing that's asymmetric about it is there's a cannon on one side. <laughs> <laughs> it's like almost exactly symmetric. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is a cool ship. And then this is the inside of the ship this is where he's the uh i guess the uh middle management guy who really really doesn't like cassian is given his uh i don't know not so inspiring speech i felt it okay but okay it's fresh i don't know it's fine mm-hmm. the more inspiring guy was this guy yeah. back here um, i yeah. thought this guy had like a i don't know a purpose to him i thought he would be very steppy he'd step up into the role that's right speech. he should feel he should feel like inspired and like driven passionate about the yeah. task that they're doing yeah he was when, it, when he was talking to the workers he was like get it done and he was talking to the management he's like i need to do this for the company and then he gets in front of his guys and oh, he's like no. floundering i didn't understand i feel it now he's like he's like has this passion this fire this justice in him but when there's suddenly pressure on him people eyes on him and he chokes like I feel it. I feel it. This guy. Mm-hmm. I'm on his side. So I want him yeah. to do well. Yeah. And Cassian did kill two people. They Maybe. should not have been good people, but did they, did they deserve to die? I don't know. It's still a murder, right? It's still murder. And that and that second guy. I mean, if the first guy was murder, I guess, manslaughter by accident. He didn't mean to like mm-hmm. kill him. But the second guy, like he calculated. He's like, nope, I need to kill you. Didn't have to, but he did. I guess. Yeah. I guess you could kind of argue with self defense. I don't know. Also, good thing they have these huge monitors here to have very clear visualizations of the tactical situation. You're yeah. like in the back and you're like, well, what is it? What? I don't what? see. Why are well, we landing? Why are we landing? <laughs> What's the building layout? Just get really close to the monitor, then you'll see. <laughs> I mean, this is super cool dropship stuff. Like everyone assesses the situation. Like on this left panel here, they see like like where is the planet? Where is the ship? Is it what orbit are we on? And then they can look over on the right image and they'd be like, ah, this is the the continents coming up. We can drop on this timing and we'll all come in from different vectors. Like this is a pretty cool ship. Tactically just designed very smart. Except the monitors are tiny. Yeah, you gotta go up one at a time and look real close. One at a time. One at a time. <laughs> 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 Can't discuss it as a group. <laughs> <laughs> so I think this is inside one of those buses that we saw in the bus terminal. It's pretty nice. Uh, I mean, it's actually pretty nice. I mean, it's a little weathered and a little worn, but generally clean. I've um, seen some more seats in the BART. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, and, and stuff gets used. So the fact that it's used but clean means you have good janitorial staff and maintainers. Like the surfaces that I'm going to sit down on and touch? Seems okay. Yeah. yeah. I also asked, I also want to know, what's with these, um, these, see these struts Like here? struts, yeah. Just sort of sitting in the compartment. It's interesting they didn't put the structural stuff on the outside. But you know what? They Remember these... riding all the buses in college? It's like that. Like they're like random poles and yeah. Wasn't well, that that's for handholds so people don't go flying? Oh, is it? I don't think that's I don't think that's holding the bus together. You know what? Yeah, and that must be right because they're not thick enough to like structurally hold it. Yeah, maybe these are too. But these look like hydraulics. Like like oh, there's a yeah. piston feeding into a fluid chamber or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because otherwise, why would they have different diameters? It would just be a solid right. bar. Yeah. Uh, uh. still or maybe it's a temporary measure maybe the bus needs to be continued to use be used but the structure is falling apart a little bit so they put these temporary struts in maybe a retrofit retrofit sure sure which means this bus is super old and so it's really really well maintained yet yeah, still end. functioning still functioning yeah uh, right here in the middle this is where that guy works with that big dong he's like dong dong every morning Talking about right here, this bell tower. That bell tower. Yeah, and this town, even though it's not like checkerboard, mm-hmm. it's more like crisscrossy, hodgepodgey. Mm-hmm. It's still very clean and organized. Kind of reminds me of a city layout in uh, like Japan. Mm. They don't really have these checker checkerboard layouts. Reminds me of this part of Sicily. Yeah. Sicily. Yeah, similar. Mm-hmm. And then cool. Look at this building here. Cylinder on sticks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's got to be the primo apartments. Yeah, true. And people, except for the people at the top that are always like leaning sideways to fit underneath the roof. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Short people on top. That's fine. They're good. Yeah. You, you kind of want the cylindrical building oh. to be this way, not this way. This is like, this reminds me of Minas Tirith. What? Minas Tirith? What is that? Oh, it's it's the uh, in Lord of the Rings number two. It's like that that city that they defend. Uh, which one is that? Maybe Lord of the Rings three is where they actually defend it. It's, it's like, like uh, the human place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. with yeah, like that, okay. with that like soup that flat part way up at the top where there's like, like a the... yeah, 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 like yeah, that tree and yeah, yeah. Uh, what is it called? Let's uh, let's uh, Minas Tirith. Not as neat, but, you know, looks like. It's got the feel, got the vibe. Minas Tirith. Yeah, perfect. Minas Tirith. Here we go. Yeah. See the vibe? Steep. I, I see it, yeah. But yeah. this is much, much steeper. There's that place uh, way up there. Yeah. The, uh, but I'm um, from the top way, there, at the tippy tip there. Here. If you yeah. shout over that over that valley, no one's going to hear you. That sound goes off to nowhere. That's right, Here yeah. in this, like against this mountainside, I don't know what the other side, like what looks what it looks like beneath mm-hmm. the camera. Like it could be a bowl, in which case they're living in like a crater or something. That mm-hmm. bell tower is going to echo throughout the entire place. Like that's very cleverly designed. Using the natural landscape to have this alarm clock for everyone, just this single bell, but mm-hmm. using like the mountains to echo the sound in. Oh, Ooh, so you're saying so... Yeah, so this is the bell tower, and then the mm-hmm. sound comes out at two angles, whichever angles they were. Because I think oh, the, the sound, it's a it's like a longitudinal piece, and the sound is going to come out at either end. Oh, yeah. And so maybe, I was thinking that it came out this way. So out yeah, here yeah. is the mountains, yeah. and it bounces yeah. the sound back in, across yeah. the city. That's why I erased, because I was thinking that's exactly right. Oh. Yeah. So organized. What clever place. I want... Yeah. Very cool. Amazing. Just everything on this town is on point. Yeah, so this is the last, very last scene in the episode. And we sort of have this vista that pans down to Cassian walking with purpose somewhere. But this is the skyline. I see the bus. You know, of course, we care about the buses. Very cool. Uh, there's a crane, very simple, very simple structure. But then I was like, what in the world is going on over here? What is, why is this, what is this armature here? Oh, interesting. Do you see that curvature, that curvature 
it looks like there are two linkages and so, or, mm-hmm. or sticks for the rotating bit. So I wonder yeah. if that means the roof can be removed. Like, like just like in like football stadiums, you can get like the, the roof to open uh, up. Maybe that's one of these things. So somewhere up here. Yeah, yeah. It's connected to a roof. And it's like, burp, 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 opens and then up. they then they they pull this way, mm. and pulls the roof off. I buy, I buy it. It's like for the roof pool for these rich people. <laughs> yeah, or Get maybe 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 freight comes down into, the su- and then it closes. Mm. And then they have random cranes over here because, for the. Other freight stuff. that's on the <laughs> yeah. water <laughs> wouldn't most freight come down from above not be lifted up from the ocean above from below i don't know i, I guess know. If, is it coming in from off world or is it coming in from the planet then yeah i don't know i guess this must be for shipping on the ocean down here mm-hmm. and then this must be for shipping from space Maybe that's like the private entrance for the penthouse guy who gets his own like special from above entrance and he's super rich and everyone else underneath has to deal with these arms in the way. <laughs> but it looks so industrial to me. Wouldn't you want that's, your that's, own that's their private problem. helipad? That's that. Yeah, yeah. And it's protected from the rain by the roof that this thing moves. Yeah. I suspect it's freight. I suspect the rich people on their private situation will be off in the hills somewhere away from this industrial mess. It's true. Hmm. Very cool. Building number five. It means there's at least five of them. Unless they're the Navy SEALs. Then there could be only be two of them. They just use the number five. What? Oh, well, you know about this? SEAL Team 6? So at the time of creation, I think it was one, three, and six, maybe. And the reason they chose to skip numbers was that... Um, on enemy radio they'd be like there's at least six well where are the other teams it's good it's a good call actually it's like this high school prank where you release pigs you release three pigs into the high school but you number them one two and four so then they so then the principal finds uh. one two and four and then three they're like where's the third pig <laughs> spend all day <laughs> looking for it yeah i mean it's good confusion of the enemy yeah although <laughs> provided why would you want to <laughs> there's okay so you're in in this town you see one two three four buildings clearly four buildings and it's one two three five it's a tourist trap and then you're like where's number four i just i just don't know well, it's a tourist trap yeah, yeah, yeah. there yeah. must be an invisible building in between three and five why is there a platform nine and three quarters like fuck off it's a tourist trap what is tourist tra- what do you why is that a tourist trap oh nine and three quarters the harry potters oh i don't know oh yeah so nine and so platform nine and three quarters is the Harry Potter platform where they like walk into a wall and uh, and then that does exist now in like England you can go to platform nine and three quarters uh, uh, but it's a tourist thing I see so this this planet did their own version where they're like mm, building number five <laughs> building number five heavy industry building number five for the tourists mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yep absolutely. I mean, anything you can get to bring money into the community. Sure. Mm -hmm. That's why Greyhound has bus terminals 1, 2, and 7. Because people go to the terminal number 7 like, the the, the numbers is just crazy. And then everyone takes pictures. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, that is season 2. No, season 2. Season 1, episode 2 of Andor. And or bent on bomb.